How you doing? Today we're going to look at the Pelican 1750 hard case and how to best cut out the foam so that when you travel with your firearms you can keep them protected and safe. First let's go ahead and open the case. Alright, go ahead and open the latches here and take a look at the case from the inside. Alright, so as you can see inside the lid we have a layer of about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half foam that stays in the lid. We're not going to cut that. Then we have about an inch and a half layer of foam inside the case that's removable. And then we also have another inch and a half in the bottom of the case. So what we're going to look at today is laying our firearms out. What's the best way to do it, how to do it, and then what's the best way to cut it out to keep the gun secure when you're traveling. So first, let's take our firearms that we're going to put in the case and check them to make sure that they're unloaded before we uh, start handling them. Okay, so we've got two AR-15s. I've already got the bolt locked back, so I'm going to inspect it. No magazine. Uh, first thing I want to do here is make sure that my sights are folded down. Okay, if, I have a, if you have a collapsible stock, you want to make sure that that is all the way collapsed. That will give you more room in the case when you lay it out. Um, also, probably make it a little bit easier if you go ahead and take any harnesses that you have off. And uh, we can revisit that later, how to store that in the case as well. So I'm going to take the single point harness off. So this is going to be the first rifle that we lay out. We're going to put two rifles, AR-15s, in this case, as well as one pistol and two PMAGs, if we have any room left. Uh, the biggest thing you want to be concerned with with this case is we do have wheels on the bottom here. Okay, So we want to try to keep a majority of the weight in the case centered on the wheels. That's going to make it a lot easier for you to pull it uh, when you're in the airport uh, or traveling or, you know, Whatever you're doing with the case, traveling with it, you want to make it as easy as possible on yourself. So we want to try to center that weight. Another thing that you want to be uh, cognizant of, you notice I have a red dot optic on here, okay? It does take up some room in the width of the case, and we don't want the optic resting on the hard shell of the case. So I'm going to space that, just like the manufacturer recommends, about an inch away from the edge. That also goes for the other rifle. When we put the other rifle in here and we lay it out, we don't want any less than one inch foam between the pieces. Otherwise, the foam can rip and tear and then the gun's going to start to move around. So you, you want to make it a fairly tug fit as best that you can. Okay, there's a second rifle. The bolt is locked back on that. It's inspected. New magazine. Again, we're going to go ahead and take this harness off as well. Okay, the sights are already folded down. I do have a scope on this AR. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on. I want to keep it on it in the case so that way when I pull the rifle out, it's ready to go. All I have to do is put the harness on and insert a mag and charge it. Okay, so in order to have enough room, we're going to have to stagger, um, we're going to go, have to ha go ahead and have to stagger the rifles in the case. And it's going to take a little bit of, of uh, practice here, moving it around, seeing you know, what's the best way to fit it in the case. It's possible, depending on your setup, you might have to take your optic off of one of the rifles so that you can bring it closer to the outside of the case and then take the optic and then lay it out somewhere like this. Um, I am running the LaRue mounts with the QR attachment so I can just pop it off real quick but I'm going to try to avoid that if I can. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and switch these rifles because this is a much heavier rifle and I'm going to put it here. See if that works better. Yes, that works. That works much better. All right, 
next we're going to place the pistol and the P mags in the case. This is my carry gun, so actually I did have it loaded. Okay, it's clear, so let's find a good place for this. P-mag here, and we'll put P-mag here. And I'm getting a little bit close to the outside edge of the case here, but because it's just the magazine, I'm not too concerned with it. Um, it's looking like I'm going to have to take this forward grip off to make it fit correctly. Take the grip off. That's much better, much better. So what I'll do is I'll, mount, I'll cut the foam out down here for that, and then I can just slap it on and off when I need to. I'm gonna be very particular about laying the guns in here because once you once you mark it and cut it out, that's that's it. Unless you end up ordering another piece of foam from Pelican. All right, so we've got everything laid out fairly nice here. So now we are going to get set up so that we can cut it out. So the first thing you want to do, uh, the manufacturer recommends to use a piece of chalk. That way, uh, once you cut it out, you can just wipe the chalk marks off the foam. Uh, reason being, when you when you mark this, you want to stay as tight as you can, but then you're going to cut either right inside the line or up to a quarter inch inside the line. That way, when you cut it out, the gun has a nice snug fit in the case. So, if you use a marker, uh, not not a big deal, except you will uh, you will see it on one side. So what we've done here is we've laid it out in this configuration. After I mark it, I'm going to use a marker and then cut it. I'm going to flip the foam over. That way we don't see any of the markings. It's face down. Another important thing to note here, you want to save all the pieces. So you don't want to cut them out you know, in an X pattern or cut chunks out. You want to make nice smooth cuts at a 90 degree angle to the foam with an electric knife like you would use to carve a turkey or a chicken. That way, uh, you're not sawing at the foam. It gives it a nice even cut straight through the foam. You're at 90 degrees, and you can save those pieces. What that allows you to do is you can put, uh, take this, this layer out, take that bottom layer out, then take the layer that you've just finished cutting out in the bottom, put your inserts that you've cut out back in, and then take your other two rifles or you know two more shotguns or whatever it may be, and then lay it out. That way you have it set up to carry multiple firearms. And then depending on what you're gonna use that day, you can just switch the layers in the case in order to accommodate what you wanna travel with. All right, so now that we've got it all laid out, we're going to go ahead and pull the rifles off, and then we're going to get set up to go ahead and cut the foam out. All right, so as you can see now, we've got it laid out. Fairly nice. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to cut 
a quarter inch inside these lines or right inside the line and it's going to be one continuous flowing cut 90 degrees perpendicular to this foam because we want a straight cut going all the way through so that when we place our item in the foam it goes all the way down and sets inside this layer of foam we don't want it pushed to the top and then having to jam the lid down hard on the firearms all right so we're back we're ready to cut the foam out so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove this layer from the case Close the case up so it's inside here. Now one of the important things when you're cutting this out is having a weight on here. So I've got some old 50 pound plates here. We'll put one on this end. That way it's nice and snug so that when I'm running the turkey knife, the electric knife, it's holding in place and I'm not uh, so, making jagged cut. Here's uh, the turkey saw, electric saw, or electric knife I should say. Okay, so here's the electric knife. This model's a Black & Decker. I got it at Walmart for about $10. They're very cheap and expensive. They do come with short four and a half foot cords, so you're probably gonna need an extension cord which I have to get. So we're ready to cut it out. This thing is very sharp, so you're gonna be very careful when you're doing this. If you have it available to you, it might be a good idea to uh, get some help uh, holding this, that way you don't cut yourself. Possibly you have to take a knife vertically to get it started. The electric knife that I'm using does not have a sharp tip. It's very dull. So you might need a starting point for each section that you're cutting out. So there's the first one, and again, I'm gonna save this because I wanna be able to put that back in the case so that I can take the bottom layer, put it on top, put these inserts back in, and then cut it out for other firearms. All right, so now that we have it all cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the case back up. So like I was telling you before, 
It's okay if you use a marker because all you have to do is flip it over. Now the marks are all on the bottom and you can't see them and we have a very professional looking case. And there you have it. We've got two AR-15s, one PMAG, forward grip, one Glock 19, two spots for a mag. Currently only have one mag in there. And that's what it looks like. Shot's nice. Thanks for joining us today on our YouTube channel. Please come back and see more. Make sure you subscribe. Check out our website at InnovativeDefensiveSolutions.com. You can find us on Facebook at Innovative Defensive Solutions. You can also find us on Twitter at IDS Training. As always, train real, train hard, train often. Realistic training for real life.